In my hometown in India, there's a phrase. It slips into the conversations like a secret. Everyone knows, but never explains. And you will hear it after a cup of chai or after a heated argument, whenever life throws you something unexpected to your way. So the chai is the Indian milk tea we want every day in the morning. And this phrase goes like this, thakar kare thik. I won't tell you what it means yet, that comes later, but I can tell you this, this phrase has carried me throughout my, throughout my life, in my every risk, in my every failure, and in my every turning point. My name is Bhagav Valara. I grew up in Surat, a city of diamonds, where almost world's 90% of rose stones are turned into the brilliance. My father carried this same phrase when he left our small village in, from Kachiawar for the Surat to find the opportunities with no guarantees. And I think I did the same, carried the same phrase and came to Germany for masters, stepping into the labs where future of green hydrogen is being tested. Today I want to take you on that same journey from single drop of water to the blade sharp enough to cut it and to the drop that could change how we see the future. A single drop of water, it looks very ordinary, right? But inside, it hides the two invisible but valuable elements, oxygen and hydrogen, bounced together. And hydrogen lies the possibility to move trains, to fuel entire industries, to power the entire cities, and to reshape the way how we live. There is a thing, how, how, we, how we split the water. We, so process called the electrolysis, and the equipments we used is the electrolyzers. I don't want to go into the deep technical insights of electrolyzer, but I can say you this, just imagine passing a current through the water, and you will see on the one side, bubble of hydrogen, on the other side, oxygen. But it sounds very simple, like, but it's not. Like, we, this, uh, this oxygen evaluation reaction, where the oxygen starts to produce, it's very slow. It's like very painfully slow, yeah? And just imagine you are trying to breathe through a straw while you are running into the marathon. It's just like that. And uh, that's why, and that's the bottleneck of this process which holds us back from our green hydrogen future. And that is why the world is investing billions. And the Germany, the whole Europe, and many countries across the globe are betting onto the hydrogen strategies. Because hydrogen is not just a fuel. It's the solution to move trains without diesel, to make steel without coal, and to, to store the renewable electricity when sun is not shining and wind is not blowing. And uh, the thing is that not all hydrogen is created equally. The most of today we use is the gray hydrogen. Uh, the hydrogen which is produced from the natural gas and which leaves behind the carbon dioxide. And sometimes it is also called as the blue hydrogen when we try to capture those emissions. And the only one which can carry forward us is the green hydrogen making from the electrolysis process by splitting the water. So when I look at this drop, I don't see, I don't just see the chemistry. I see it's like my in inheritance because back home in Surat, when my father tries to, when my father moved, my, moved to the new city, he tries to split the risk into the opportunities. And I think I'm also doing the same. I'm splitting the water to find the better possibilities. And when I look at this drop, I don't just see the water, I see the potential locked behind a stubborn and a slow reaction. And to cut through it, we need something sharper, just like a blade. And every blade has its own sharpness. And uh, in science, sci the sharpness comes from the material we choose. And for me, that material is the magazines. These are very futuristic, powerful, and nowadays quietly rewriting the rules. So, it was discovered in 2011 from in the Drexels University in United States of America. So uh, they come from the ceramics called max phases. Scientists tried to remove one, one single atomic layer and whatever left behind was just an extraordinary, a single sheet of a few atoms thick. And it was a very sharp because we can split 
the water in, because of that. And uh, since then, it has been studied for supercapacitors, the batteries, and the sensors. And for me, in my journey, I am using this blade to split the water and to make the water splitting efficient. Why I call them a blade? Because uh, here's the thing. Just think of these uh, tiny electrons. They, they are very essential to drive every chemical reaction. So just imagine electron as a tiny car which is trying to reach to the destination. And in, uh, in many catalysts, this car got stuck into the traffic jam. But the magazines are like German autobahn. No, st no speed limit, no traffic jam, just a smooth and fast travel. And then comes the water interaction. Many catalysts pushes away the water, but magazines loves the water. And so every, every molecule touches the surface, so reaction starts faster and runs better. And uh, then comes the flat surface. Uh, magazines are not just a flat, they have layers just like book with many pages. So when reaction starts, magazines open their every pages and creating more active sites and gives the more space or room for the reaction to happen. Magazines are not alone in this world as the catalyst for the water electrolysis. We have iridium, ruthenium, which are stable but very expensive. And we have cobalts and nickels, which are not so stable, but they are the, cost, they are the cheapest one. So when, so magazines are not competing with, with them, they are just collaborating with them. And this summation of all these aspects results the better performance, lower energy losses, and, better st and the greater stability. And that's what this all results we see every day at Hemol Centrum Berlin, where my whole research group is working under the guidance of Dr. Michelle Brown, where we where we explore the magazine-based catalyst to make water splitting efficient. That's the, about the, all the magazines. And uh, in the experiments, we try to change many parameters to see what we are getting better. And I think in the science and in general life, we follow the same principle. We took the raw materials, we remove what's unnecessary, and we shape something that's cut through, cut through the limit. And that's why I call magazines a blade because it's the cutting edge for the what's the possible. And we have split the drop, we have sharpened the blade, but every sharpest blade needs the guidance, a plan or a blueprint. And that's where our code begins. Earlier, the material discovery was very slow. It was the game of patience and luck because scientists mix the chemicals, ran experiments, and just waiting for something to work. But sometimes they found the gold, but most often they found just more questions. And now that search is changing, we have now the new collaborator, artificial intelligence, not to replace us, but to make our search wider and smarter. And AI can learn from thousands of our past experimental data. It can even suggest us which material is good, which path we must follow which is worthy and which combination gives the great stability. It saves our energy, efforts, and our endless guessing. And it is also called as the generative AI because it can even imagine the new molecules, new structures, but AI is not just a magic. It needs data, good, clean, and complete data. And whatever data we have in the material science or in science, we have this data is hidden. It's hidden in the different labs, in the old papers, and written in the different formats, which is never said. I personally call this data as a dark data because the, the knowledge we already have, we can't use it yet. So even so, before AI can imagine even bigger, we need to t teach it better. We have to open our data, share them, clean them, and make a strong foundation for the learning. We already have the best catalyst or best combinations, which, is, which can crack the green hydrogen or green energy future, but it's hidden in the universe of billions of combinations. So AI will not give us the final answer, but it can give us the telescope to see deeper and search wider. I personally don't use AI in my regular technical, uh, in my lab work, but I personally believe that 
this, uh, the future is the partnership where human, in, human curiosity can integrate with the machine intelligence. And a few days ago, I, I, I read an article which called hydrogen as a champagne of the green hydrogen as the champagne of the energy. Expensive, exclusive, and not for daily use. And yeah, I think it's, it is actually true because green hydrogen is still costly and complex, but I think even every precious thing takes time because back home in Surat, when we prepare the diamonds, not, from, not overnight, but with pressure, precision, and patience. So I feel green hydrogen is not a champagne for celebration, but it's, it's the diamond in the making, which is shaped by science and, and time. And I said a phrase in the beginning, thakar kare thik. In the deepest religions and Hinduism meaning, it means whatever God does, whatever nature did, is the right. It's not the excuse for whatever happening in our life, it's just about because of him and we don't need to do anything. It's not about that, it's about doing your best, taking the risk and trusting the outcome. Because whether drop becoming a fuel, of rose stone becoming a diamond, an idea becoming a reality, every transformation starts from the faith in the process. And I remember this phrase always because even in my life, my path is even uncertain. I still believe progress is happening layer by layer, molecule by molecule, and dream by dream. So Drop gave us the dream, magazines gave us the tool, and code gives us the vision. And together, it can make the blueprint of tomorrow's hydrogen future. Thank you.